The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here, sitting for Larry Pesavento and listening to that music. You know, rather rather have Mozart uh, Major Figaro than the Mozart Requiem. Right now, we're looking at the chances of testing all-time highs in many of the indices. Um, very likely, within the next day or so, we have, in fact, in the SPY already made a new all-time high. The S&P is down a little bit; hasn't got much to go to do that. The Dow missed an all-time high by about 90 points yesterday. Um, this is going to be very interesting. The Qs uh, also are very close. That's the index 100. Let's run these numbers. You're looking at the Dow. I, I, just for the moment, I'm going to go to the futures because this is pre-market. We're 9.07 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Time. Made a fractional new high overnight in the YM. That's the continuous contract of the Dow. 27.380 was the high. Let me just double check because that gets smoothed out. That gets changed. Yep, 3.80 on the 15th of July. Bye. Plunges down to the 25,000 level, rallies back up over 2,000 points to 27,000. Right now, 27,253, up 69. But the high of today is already 27,312. What is that? 60, uh, 68 points away from the all time high, 61 from making a new all time high. And you see this V shape. This is what I'm looking at here. I believe there's a lot of resistance, although the fact that there were uh, resistance levels that were that held back the market for a couple of days, for about three, four days, and then start to break to the upside absolutely determinately, as if every day the buying pressure was so strong that any resistance, especially the last hour, half hour to an hour of, of each day, you've seen some really good moves. Um, that's saying that fund managers were actually putting money to work for the next day. And that's really important. So as I'm looking at this, we, we are actually in the situation where um, there's a cup formation. You usually at the previous high, if you don't spiral right through it, starting to at least two out of three uh, bars, in this case, two or three days, close decisively above the previous high to really establish a decent a low just below that high. If you stall at this level, that can create some kind of a, a cup and a handle formation with another little tiny cup coming up. And that's exactly, that's kind of what I'm thinking that next week we're going to have a lot of news events and there's a chance that we start to stall just while waiting. And that stalling is going to see whether or not the technicals, which are really strong in the daily chart, not so much in the weekly and the monthly charts haven't turned positive yet. That's going to tell me whether or not there's enough energy to have another big move into the Dow, uh, 27,400s and higher. The S&P would be into the 3,048, maybe 3,050s or higher. And that's really what we're looking at. So let's run the numbers. In the, in the Dow itself, let's go back to the cash index because we haven't opened. We're opening up in about 20 minutes or so. Um, we're watching there's a little doji candle in this leg D. I just want to do this quickly for those of you who are new to my work. Um, in the Chapman Wave methodology, I talk about only three patterns straight up, straight down an arch formation and a cup formation. Those three patterns are throughout the market. The arch could be an inverted V and the cup could be a V-shaped pattern, but it's the same thing. You're going from one level, you're rallying and then you're coming back and you're testing it. Or you're going from one level and you go down and you come right back up and you're testing that high. You can get a combination and that combination says you can go straight down, you can bounce in a pattern that I call an H pattern, lowercase h, if you take out that left side low with the technicals poor and you close under it for a certain number of bars, you're going to be going lower. If you take it out and close above it, that's a good sign. You can rally towards the arch high. If you don't even take out the left side high, you can go above the arch high. You can even go back to from where you started. And it's the same thing for the inverse. This is the Y pattern. 
a reverse Y. On the left side, I call it green because when it goes from the left side, comes into a little cup formation, retests that and breaks to the upside, that's very positive. In the Chapman Wave methodology, we're looking at at least four higher peaks in a buy signal to buy mode. Buy mode impl implies that you're going to make at least four higher peaks. I alphabetize them, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. It goes A, one penny above A goes to B, pulls back. One penny above B goes to leg C. Leg C continues until it makes a peak. You go one penny above peak C, start leg D, turn down at D, the fourth highest peak. Other things can happen. You'll see how many times that fourth highest peak is important. The Dow. Peak D on the 16th of July at 27,398 and plunges down to 25,339. We're in leg D with a little doji candle right now. That's going to be important. That's a sign for me to say a little, you've raised your foot off the accelerator, you've got your foot hovering over the brake because other things can happen at peak D. Peak E in the weekly chart goes down in a V-shaped pattern. The last V-shaped pattern went higher, quite a bit higher, from the 26,695 level to 27,398, 700 points higher. Let's see if this is going to stall here or go much higher. You do have an up-channel resistance line, and that comes in in the 27,500s. So let's go one step at a time. The monthly chart will make a peak D, a leg D, the moment it goes to 27,399. Just keep it as simple as that. And at that point, we'll see whether the MACD, which is still the moving average convergence divergence, this is the right chart, is the monthly, in the middle is the weekly, on the left is the daily. We'll see if that's going to cross positive. The stochastic has been very good, over 80%. I like over 80%. It's at 86%. And that'll be a very quick. Remember, there was a nine-month consolidation between January of 2018, high, and the Dow at 2018. Uh, 616, pulls back to 23,344, rallies to a new high nine months later, 26,951, or October of 2018, plummets in the December, smash to the downside, 21,712, rallies in nine months, it makes a new high, and now we've had just one month, and this is the second month of consolidation without making a new high. Looks like we're going to make a leg D in September. That's going to be very important. Now, let's get to um, the nitty-gritties of the others. I'll do them quickly. S&P right now, the S&P futures are up, uh, up four, and uh, three 3,020 was the high yesterday. 3,027 was the high on the 27th. Um, we went all the way down to 28.22. Now we're back. This is not really a cup formation. This is a rectangle formation. I don't want to get into that right now. But you can see this green line right here is major long-term resistance. And that takes you to, in the S&P, around about 3,061. This is going to be a very important week coming up. Uh, we're looking at stocks like an Amazon, like the FANG stocks, only Apple's close to an all-time high. The FANG stocks have been lagging, but you've seen the deep cyclicals like United Technologies. United Technologies trading at 137.97 right now. The, 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 the all-time high is 144.40, but the last high on the 25th is 138.31. It's in leg D, and it's challenging that. Caterpillar is acting very nicely here. It is up uh, 62. It's at the pre-market. We'll be looking at this. We'll talk more about it, and we'll talk about the grains, and we'll go through the commodities as soon as we get back. Question in the den about hogs. We'll do that as well. Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pizzaver to trade what you see. I'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Trappin sitting for Larry Pesavento. Um, I had a question from Ruby in the Den about lean hogs. Uh, she's a long both. Actually, it was limited out. Fabulous. Uh, really good, good positioning there. And the question is, um, Basil, if you can please look at the December and October hogs. I have both. Can you tell me which one I should keep? Thank you. You know, Ruby, the, the chart formations are pretty much the same. Let me just do this again. That's LHV. I'm going to go to LHZ. Let me keep my eye on this one. Hmm. 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 <sighs> Holding all the way through to December. You know, I, I looked at the commodity index. This is mostly, you know, it's a mix. Uh, if I look at the DBC, that's mostly grains. Uh, if I'm looking at, yeah, I, you know, I. Let me just go to LH. The LH is the one that I usually use because that's the continuous contract. And if it goes limit up again today, you know, Ruby, I, I'm I'm not sure that I would be looking at this as a hold all the way through to December. But if this double bottom at 60 is a really good um, a good positioning for a move that goes into late October, early November, and you're already out of it, um, that means you have to take up a new position. So, uh, HEV, HEV 19. Okay, I don't get that. All right, so I'm just going to say to you, based on the chart patterns, patterns, I don't trade this. So I'm only doing this absolutely theoretically, and I would prefer that I was actually in the position to be able to give you the kind of advice that says with the experience of being in it and knowing what it does, knowing what it does if it's limited up. I, I cannot say that. I'm just looking at the chart formation, and the weekly has quite a bit of way to go before it really improves. So I'm going to say to you that the patterns are good and that it's the price is the one that I'm really looking at. I would want to see if live hogs are going to trade um, if they're going to trade very well for six to eight weeks, I want to see this rectangle 
which was like a, it became almost like a fulcrum where it broke down. Now it's a basing pattern. If at any point in the next three weeks you see live hogs underneath 56.70, let's call it 50, under 50, yeah, under, closing under 57, um, that's a problem. That makes this whole area very strong resistance. So I don't, I'm not going to be able to tell you whether or not which contract I should hold. I'd probably be saying if you in, if your profit is exactly the same in both, the one in December is going to give you a little slightly less leverage because the one in October is going to move closer to one for one and you're going to get a little slippage in the December. I'd probably say I'd stick with the October one because I think for me, you're probably going to be out before then. But if you're thinking this is a potential for a long term contract and you can see that hogs can start to go to the 68, 70 level, if they get in 68, 70, I don't think you're going to get your price that you got in recently. I think that's going to be looking good. And then if you think this is a much longer term trade and you want to be in it for the longer term, stay with the December contract. But if this is really more a trading vehicle, then I'd go with October because you're going to get just not much, but slightly better bang for your buck. That's really what I'm saying. So keep it in mind, time is your enemy here. Time is your friend. On a short-term basis, the narrow contract is going to act better, and the, the other one will participate, but not quite to the same extent. But if you're holding and you say, you know what, I just don't think it's coming down to the level that I got in at, and you feel comfortable about that, then you want to hold it as long as possible. And you'll look fantastic if in October, at any point, this is trading at 70 and you're in the December one, you're just home and dry. You don't have to put another position in. So think of it as a timing instrument. Uh, that's the best way that I can do that. Um, okay. Now, the other thing that I'm looking at here is, uh, I just want to go through these, look, wheat, Wheat is acting very well. It's up three and three quarters right now at 487. This is the first time I'm getting a cup formation in quite a while. MACD's good stochastics at 88%. That's very strong. That says that uh, wheat right now, I'm looking at the continuous contract, has a lot of support. It's at 487 between 4. 81 and 476. That should be a holding pattern, and then it should go to D. You see this little green line? It's called the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. It's hugging that. If it can pop right over it, then the 200 period moving average of 502 in the daily chart becomes the pattern. Weekly is in a spectacular move. We were actually trading the DBC, uh, the, com more, the commodity index. Um, E, this is the ETF, and we traded this very nicely for the grains, and then we got out. So we are on back in, but I'm looking at it. I think this is this is this right. This looks like a little doggy at the tree. Look, this is uh, right, raising the right leg there. This is much higher than it was at the low. This is a good sign. It says that we should rally a little bit more, and then it should try to find some kind of a higher base. And the same thing with uh, soy. Soy is up. Uh, soy beans are one one three quarters at eight eight ninety seven. Um, if if the soy contract starts to trade at nine oh four. At some point within the next two weeks, 914 becomes a target. Tremendous support in between 886 and 882, as I see it right now. Good sign. And corn, as we say in Boston, corn. Corn is trading at 371 and a quarter, up four. Uh, this is lagging a lot, but it's turning into a 371. I, I would say that it turns the 365, 361 area into key support if it can start to get to the 384 level. That'll be the best sign, and the others should be moving ahead as well. So that's that. That's that. Um, there. I wanted to look at CC. I was asked about that. This is a cocoa trading in leg D right at the 200 period moving average. Look at this beautiful cup formation. See the commodities are already moving here. I'm going to talk about that in a moment in relation to yields, etc. But yes, uh, cocoa acting very well. Weekly chart is. Improving. It's not great. A monthly chart, same thing. But that daily chart, beautiful cup formation. It says that at 2.367, there's a good chance that if it gets to 2.40, it's turning the 2.33 area into very strong support. Coffee, since this is a Larry show, I'm doing all these these commodities. Coffee's trading at 102.45, down a dollar 15. Should make a leg D over this big term with a stochastic at 87, and it should make a leg D going above. 
uh, 104.70. That was the high on the continuous contract uh, on the 11th, three days ago, and it's making the 100 and 100.10 to 99.70 area. Pretty good support. What am I missing here? Platinum. I wanted to go to platinum. Platinum had a peak E and it's consolidating. Look at the chart. Went above the weekly 200 period moving average. I said that's the thing to watch. And I drew in the rectangle. It's gone under the rectangle low. So I'm going to lower the, that. And this is now stuck in a range of between nine. It's at 960 right now. I would say 972 is very strong resistance. And if it takes out 925, it could even drop to the 929.18 level. Let's look at gold. Gold right now is up 2.4 at 15.09. Yep, stuck in the lower range of this rectangle. Remember, rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. So keep in mind, if gold trades any day, if it closes underneath 14.85 in the continuous contract, that's saying this entire area of 1510 to 1500 is going to be the resistance to monitor. We've got a break coming up. When we get back, we'll be talking live markets. Um, Basil Chapman sitting here for the one and only Tom. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24 7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the markets opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. I am the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour every Monday through Friday, market days, uh, noon to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm also the author of the opening call, Daily Newsletter, very comprehensive newsletter. And uh, let's see here. We've got bonds down a point. 
And underneath, you see this little dashed line. Yeah, this is a 50-period exponential moving average. And you see on the in the middle chart, the green line here is the nine-period exponential moving average. The black line, which it touched today, is the 14-period moving average. I'm in a sell mode in the uh, daily chart of the bonds. The MACD is very negative, stochastic down at 8%, going from the double, going from the over 80% level to um, eight percent is a very strong decline and that suggests that there's going to be quite a bit more uh, weakness to come in the bonds as the stochastic tries to turn around from single digits tries to go back to the uh, double digits and that says that the re re uh, Strong resistance now is yesterday's high of 162 and 930 seconds to the previous high of that candle right there of 163. So that's going to be any bounce that comes here is that's what I'd expect and then do some retesting to see if a base can form. Most importantly, my weekly chart by Friday's, Friday afternoon at four o'clock this afternoon, I will be in this is now very close. It's a I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get a sell signal. I need to see the MACD cross negative and the stochastic at 85% go under 80% for me to actually put a down arrow. Um, I might do it before, but for me to go from a sell signal to a sell mode in the weekly chart. And if you look at the monthly chart, you'll see there's a huge cup formation, double top formation. And that double top formation, which goes to the high that was made back in July of 2016, there's a continuous contract, so the price could change, but the pattern and the date are exact. 164.5 was the high, and the high in, uh, let's see, the high last month was 166.25, and this month is 166.23. So there could be a peak C right here in what I call a Chapman wave a two-bar reversal, and that would suggest that there could be a move in the monthly chart to the 163, 153s. That's going to be the nine-period moving average, make a kind of a handle pattern, and then maybe start a move to the upside if the pressure around the world for lower rates continues. America and bonds aren't going to be able to change that pattern because it's been forced upon them. But in the meantime, this is a very severe decline. Hey, but look where it came from. This is just an arch formation. It feels dramatic, but look at the dramatic move to the upside. This candle low right here of the, um, the 8th of August at 158 and 30, 30 seconds. Let's call it 158. That whole 158 area, that's today's low so far is 158 uh, 29 30 seconds so we we're, we're doing that and look what we've done it's gone one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen bars to the right 13 days and from that low it was one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen days so it feels unbelievably dramatic but wait a minute it took it's a it's a match you took let me draw this in. This is the stuff I like to do. Look at the pattern from this low to that high to the doji candle. Look at that tiny little doji candle right there at the all time high, uh, at least for this particular chart. And now look what's happened. So that matches. It's one day early from that high. I, uh, oh, I didn't count that bar. So uh, yeah, it's one day. So that's green. Look at that. So you go up in 14 bars and you come down in 13. So one day early and it took, did it take it out? Well, the day's young. The day's young, 158, 30, it's already taken it out. Yes, one, one, we went to 20, 20, 30 seconds. Isn't that interesting? Um, I always say patterns match. I love to look at the similarity. This is the plumb line. You use this plumb line right here. Look at this. And what you get is, let me move it over, one bar, there it is. The plumb line says that it felt unbelievable going to the upside. Well, you had already gone for, for days to the upside. In this case, you've come down, and, it's, and you say, oh, my God. Look at this. But what you've done is you've just given back almost the same number of bars and the same, number of, same price in a matching time frame. It's in crash mode that it breaks down. So this was crash mode to the upside. It's a Chapman wave cup and ladle uh, breakout. 
that means you get to the, the left side high. That was a peak D right here. This was leg D, and it spiraled higher right through this cup formation. And um, when it does that, before you get to a D, a peak D, that is, that's called a champion wave cup and ladle. Not the cup and handle, which stops. This is right through. In one powerful move, it takes out the left side lip, and it went all the way from that 157 area resistance all the way to the high that I said was 167 something, 166 and 25, 30 seconds. All right, so that's bonds. And what that leads to is when money comes out of bonds, when money comes out of stocks, goes into bonds, and you'll see bonds rally sharply in stock, kind of hold or pull back. When the money comes out of bonds, that very often goes into stocks. And that's the reason why I'm still mega bullish on the market. But shorter term, I think we're getting to some kind of some kind of strong resistance. That's what I can say. Question to them, SPLK. Can I look at SPLK? SPLK. SPLK. What is that? Splunk. Oh, that is Splunk. Okay. Splunk um, has a little bit of a pattern that looks somewhat similar to those grains we were looking at. It's trading at 113. I, yeah, I've looked at this before. I used to have had it. I had it notated. I haven't got it now. The fact that it's testing this left side low twice now and taking it out, that's from the week of the 6th, uh, 7th of June, 2019. 107.89 was the low. Last week's low was 106. 7.16, and this is 107.45. Um, the fact that it did it after making uh, almost high arch formation, and the technicals are still weak, says to me that the turnaround with the stochastic going from the single digits to 33%, and this thing only going from the 107 area to 116, yeah, nine points. But when you look at the whole spectrum, this is not a very strong stock. It's a weak stock. So S&P, I'm going to say, I'm not looking at what the, if you're in it, I don't know if you're long or whether you're short. I'm just saying if you are long, I just want to say to you, if it takes out the low of uh, three days ago of 110.71, it's just stuck in a range and it's going to keep testing the 107s. It needs very quickly by Monday or Tuesday, in fact, that the market is up 57, the S&P is up 339, and this is down 78 cents. Says to me, there's a lot of resistance. I'm just going to say, I would, if you had to ask me, would I go long or would I go short or would I hold? I, I do absolutely nothing now. I'd be looking at this and saying, I'm not sure if it's a short right now. I'd have to wait until a little later in the day. Now it's down to $1.05. So I'm thinking that it's, there's a greater chance to do a retest of the 108 to 107s than to try to go to the 117 level by next week. So I'm just saying, um, just step aside. Keep it on your list. If it's a stock you've looked at that you would like to buy, let's see how it does for the testing. Because if the market turns out to be a little weak next week, W-E-A-K in the W-E-E-K of next week, um, then you just have to hold off. But if there, it starts to rally when the market's weak, uh, rather than pulling back with the market, because it's not running now with the market. So I just hold off. Um, I'm Basil Chapman. We'll be back straight off the city's Larry Pizzo. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30,000 to 75,000, the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year Treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed Designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Hi, folks. We're back. So I had a question about NVTA, NVIDIA Corporation Diagnostic Genetics, made a peak C in the, uh, well, I'm saying a leg C because it can't be a peak C until September is finished, but it's a peak C in the month. Let me just put that C in the Chapman Wave methodology. Right there's your C. Um, made a peak D pullback in the weekly chart and a peak G, unusual peak G in that V shape. We're looking at a lot of these V shape formations. That's the pattern de jour. Um, and then it plunges from the uh, 28 down to the uh, nine uh, to the 20 level. Uh, touches 19, and now it's at 2186. Um, it came off the 200 period moving average. I'd say, well, what's the question? It recently came off. Yep, there. Okay. So um, I'm doing it backwards here. Jason wanted to know. So, NV, if you have time, can you look at NVTA for a long? It, it recently came off the 200 EMA and closed right under the 9 EMA yesterday. Thanks, Jason. So, yeah, I like this as a setup because you follow these very closely. And there was almost like a one to one parallel move in the weekly chart pullback. Um, I like what I'm seeing here because it came off a doji right on the 200 period moving average in the MACD and stochastic are turning up and they're not great. So I'm going to say because you are always looking at the longer term picture, Jason, I'm going to say for you, start a position at 21.95 right now. This is a starter position. Therefore, I would give it just for the next two days. I'd make 21.10 to 20.90, somewhere around there, the stop on the position. Just give it a little room, a little more than I would normally give. But because a longer term position, I'd probably say 20.70. Give it a little bit more. So it's almost like a whole point uh, or point and a quarter that you're giving it as, as uh, some kind of a stop. Now, what you want to see is that by Tuesday, it hasn't taken out 21.30. It's at 21.90. It's at 22 right now. And you want to see that it's trading by Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning. I want this leg A. It's a gray leg A, meaning it's way under the previous high. But I want to see this still in leg A and up at a 2280 or higher level by Monday afternoon or Tuesday. So that now let me say Tuesday afternoon to Wednesday. Give it a couple of days. It's acting well. It needs a lot of work to help the weekly chart, but the daily chart has started to bounce. And the other one that you were looking at is we had looked at it before SPG, and I said start a little position at, the, at that point. I can't remember when it was. It's obviously had a big move since then. Um, can you do a follow-up on SPG during the show? I'm long from 151. It's trading at 156.86. Very nice. Um, 
and and change and looking to add to the position as the first buy was just a half position. Yesterday, it looks like SBG bounced off the nine EMA in the daily chart. Yes, um, I like I like what I'm seeing here, uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to say to you. The deepness of the pullback from a peak C says you might have to wait another two, three days at 156. It's up a dollar fifty-four right now. So because it's a second position, if it was a first position, I'd say get in now. But this is second position. I want a little more caution on the second position. I don't mind paying a little more if I feel that the stochastic is turning around from 71 percent to go to 75 percent. Uh, but I don't want to see it drop below 150, 54. And you're in at 151, so you've got a really nice cushion. So I'm just going to say the ideal place for a second entry would be Wednesday to Thursday of next week. I need to give it a little time. Um, <coughs> it's going to be much more difficult if it actually trades at 159 in the next two days. And then I'm going to have to say uh, you've given up a couple of points, but actually now you've got more confirmation of strength. And that weekly chart pullback says it's the starter position. I'm going to say, Jason, hold off on the second position. Remind me again Monday or Tuesday to look at it. But right now I'm saying for a second position, that's a way more confidence than I would have right now um, without it digesting the big gain. It's gone from 145 to 163 in just a straight up move. I want a little more time. So on the second on the second position, hold off on SPG. A couple of questions I had. Yeah, let me just see what happened with the um, hogs. They gapped up again. Yes. Oh, look at that. So oh no, HG, sorry. HG is copper. Copper is in a strong leg B. This is the first time we've had really powerful candles in the copper contract. Look at the MACD, how strong it is. Look at the stochastic at 85%. First time I can say I like copper. I think it's closing positive on the MACD. If this Friday it holds, uh, it's at 269. If we can hold above 268 into the close or even get a little stronger, that'll be the first really good sign in the MACD. I like copper. Yesterday I was asked about SCCO, and I said SCCO. Uh, Southern Copper. Yeah, I said the target would be the 200 period moving average of 36.14. Today's high 36.41, giving some of that back. Really nice move. Yes, I like. I think Copper, this whole thing with the TRCCI, let me see where that is right now. Look at that gap to the upside. TRCCI is the Thomson Reuters Commodity Equal Weighted Index. Really nice going to the 200 period moving average of 397, trading at 396 right now. I like this. I think this is the commodities are becoming active for the first time. And that says I've got to watch this dollar because the dollar pulling back um, is as long as it doesn't break to to the 9950s, the 9937 was the last high. If it gets to 9950s, that might impact the commodities again. But as long as it's holding sideways, consolidating in the weekly chart, I still love the dollar. I think dollar is the Holly Davidson of commodities uh, of currencies. Um, I don't mean the company. I mean the icon, the American icon of Holly, and that's really what I'm looking at. I like it. And it's just digesting huge gains. Let's see where gold is right now. Gold was up before. It's up a little more, up at 5.4. It's stuck in the range. I'm actually going to take this rectangle right here. I'm going to I'm going to make another one inside and say this is the this is the more shorter term one that you're looking at right there. So going above 1520 would be very positive short term. I still say it's stuck in the range. It's digesting huge gains, and that should continue my target for the GDX is the 26s. 26.04 was, was the key support back in late August. It ran up to 30.96. Um, I think it's making an arch formation like the TBT, TLT. So the TBT, which we almost had as a, as a buy my, my, for my subscribers, I decided not to do it. I'm not sure why I decided not to do it, because it really looked like it was building strength with the TLT starting to make a top. Um, comment was, Paul says, TLT set to open at 138, which is below the 50 DMA. I use the EMA, but it's the same thing. So the TLT is under the 50 period exponential moving average. Uh, Paul uses the, um, uh, the DMA. And I'm, uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever you use, just be consistent with whatever you use. And this hasn't happened in six months. Uh, guess no big deal. He says, no, it is a big deal. Of course, it's a big deal. Everything's a big deal. Um, but that I, I, you're talking 
You're talking um, a crash in bonds. I don't see a crash in bonds, not yet. I do see one later. And then I think yield start to really scream higher, but not for a while. That's just my opinion, and that's your opinion. That's the way it is in the market. Okay, now I want you to look at a couple of things. I, have I skipped anything? I did the bonds. I did the, oh, crude oil. Crude oil right now is down uh, 14 cents at 54.96. Remember, I love to draw these rectangles. It's so easy. You just grab your little drawing tool if you have one. And you just put it in here, and there's this rectangle stuck in the rectangle formation. And a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. You can pop above it, pop below it, but that the weight, the, the, the pull, the magnet of the whole middle of this is really an issue. It's in the 55 area, so it can go back and back and forth. But this is really what I'm watching that crude oil stay in a range for a little while. Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Presidente. We've got one little segment to go. We'll do a wrap. I'll talk about the marks as soon as we get back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So in my uh, show, the Tiger Technicians are coming up at noon today, noon Eastern time to 1 o'clock. I'm going to go through a number of questions I've got about... <clears throat> Certain stocks like Square, etc., which is very disappointing, acting very poor. SQ is a symbol. So let me just do this quickly. The Dow has an all time high of 27,398. It came within less than 100 points of it yesterday. I believe that it should try for that, but at these double tops, you've got to be a little cautious because it's like a barrier. Remember the left side, right side price time match comes, it actually comes in uh, to Wednesday. What's today? So it's got one two, 
three. It's got about three more sessions to try for 27398 to make a match with a plumb line from the low of 25,339 on August the 15th. So that's that's key. The SPY did make an all-time high yesterday. And uh, another doji, these little doji candles are really the hints to say that the momentum has changed just for that moment. If it then breaks out to the upside, you can get a, an, a, an equal move from the last trough to the next high. Um, or, or vice versa on the downside. But this is where I start to watch things very closely. The MACD and stochastic are suggesting that there's still tremendous strength, but that could be support rather than actual extension to the upside. Today should have been a nice move to the upside with new highs. So far, we haven't seen it. So I'm thinking that early next week, we're going to have a sign to say, do we break out, start a brand new move to the upside with completely new levels in the S&P, the Dow, the Qs, or do we stall and just go sideways trying to rebuild strength? It's going to be very important. So keep that in mind. I'm not ignoring the fact that the TLT is down at the 138 level for uh, 10 points lower than it was, but we just did the match on the left side to the right side. No big deal there. What will be a big deal if the uh, if the TLT actually breaks 134 support next week for whatever reason? That will be a big deal. Okay, IYT, the transportation index is soaring. It's it's still way under the all. Time high of 209, but it's trading at 195 today at a very big spike, and now it's pulled back some. But I like to see the transports moving with this is not Dow 3, but moving in the line with the with the Dow itself. I'll be back at noon. Otherwise, have a wonderful week. This is Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pesavento, and uh, just best to you all. Have a great day, and I will see you in a few hours. Otherwise, Monday is a new day. Have a great weekend.